Welcome to Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition. Today we're going to talk about the Battle of South Mountain that occurred in Washington and Frederick Counties, Maryland on September 14, 1862. On September 9, 1862, Special Order 191, known as the Lost Dispatch, was a movement order issued by Confederate Commander Robert E. Lee to his troops. A copy of these orders had been recovered by Union intelligence and had an impact on two battles, the Battle of South Mountain and the Battle of Antietam. These orders detailed the Confederate movements across the Potomac and had a great impact on the Union responses to both battles. It should be noted that the Battle of South Mountain was actually three smaller engagements at one time. The Battle of Crampton's Gap, the Battle of Turner's Gap, and the Battle of Fox's Gap, all of which occurred on September 14th. The first and arguably most important engagements for the Union was Union Major General William B. Franklin and his troops. They were ordered to attack Crampton's Gap at Pleasant Valley and rescue the Union troops at Harper's Ferry. Franklin arrived at South Mountain on September 14th, and there he met with Confederate General Lafayette McClaws. You should remember him from our Harper's Ferry battle. McClaws was unaware of Franklin's arrival and had only arranged a rear guard of about 500 men under Confederate Colonel William A. Parham. At approximately 3 p.m., Franklin moved the Union forces forward towards the Confederate lines. His left flank was protected by the forces of Major General William F. Smith and his right flank by Union Major General Henry W. Slocum. It wasn't a contest at all as Franklin's 12,000 men fell on the 500 Confederate defenders and the newly arrived Cobb's Brigade who was attempting to aid Colonel Parham and his Confederate troops. However, Franklin did not keep the momentum going and instead he refused to keep moving forward telling overall Union Commander McClellan that he couldn't go any further due to being outnumbered and that he needed reinforcements. This meant he failed to get the Harpers Ferry to relieve the Union forces under Miles Dixon. Meanwhile, the rest of the Union Army moved towards Bondsboro in an attempt to cut off the rest of Robert E. Lee's Confederate Army. There they came across Confederate Major General Daniel Harvey Hill's division, who had 5,000 men stretched between two miles near Turner's Gap and Fox's Gap. Union General Jesse L. Reno's troops marched south to Fox Gap, while Union General Hooker focused on the other side, north to Turner's Gap. During these maneuvers, Union General Jacob D. Cox's Kanawha Division traveled up the old Chartsburg Road to attack the Fox Gap directly. Confederate Brigadier General Samuel Garland Jr.'s forces could not withstand the attack. They lost Garland himself, and once the Confederate commander was dead, the Confederate line collapsed. The Union troops decided to regroup and rest, enabling Confederate Commander Lee to reinforce his defenses with troops under the command of C.S. Brigadier General John Bell Hood. The Union forces recommenced their attack, but were unable to push back the Confederate defenders. As dusk fell, the unthinkable happened, and Union General Reno was killed himself. The Confederates held the gap until after 10 p.m. when they were ordered to withdraw. Meanwhile, Union General Hooker's men attacked Confederate General Robert Rhodes and his men in the mountains at Turner's Gap. The majority of the fighting consisted of the Union's Iron Brigade, while the local Confederate forces were under command of Colonel Alfred H. Colquitt and his brigade. Unfortunately, reinforcements were not possible for the Confederate troops, forcing Colquitt and overall forcing Rhodes to retreat. Union General Hooker seized the mountains, but it was too late at night for Hooker to take advantage of the victory and push forward. Seeing his forces collapse, Confederate General Lee pulled his men back toward Sharpsburg, utilizing the cover of night to protect his retreat. Overall, while the Confederates did retreat, it was a pretty even match when it came to casualties. The Confederate forces lost a total of 2,325 men, consisting of 443 men killed, 1,807 men wounded, and 75 missing while the Union lost approximately 2,500 men, consisting of 325 killed, 1,560 wounded, and approximately 615 men missing. Join us again next time on Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition.